drawing of straws was held earlier this week to uh, determine the order of appearance on that opening statement. Following the statement, candidates will respond to questions from a city club panel, which is organized here in the front of the room. Our questioners today are members of the program committee, Paula Copewell and Greg Jackson. Questions were submitted in advance of the meeting in writing by members of the city club and were vetted by a subcommittee of the uh, program committee. These are the only questions that will be asked today. There will not be questions from the floor. The candidates have not seen these questions in advance. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to the question from the panel member. And our timer, uh, seated today in front with the panel, is Jolene Clausen, who is adept at keeping us all honest in, in terms of timing and moving the program forward. Following the panel questions, each candidate will have the opportunity to ask one question of each of the other candidates. The answers will be limited to one minute. At the end of each question, the questioner has an optional 30-second rebuttal. Following the rotation of candidate questions, each candidate then will make a two-minute closing statement. The meeting then is governed by the format I've just described and by the rules of conduct which are available on your tables if you choose to peruse them. The program will adjourn approximately at 1.15. Let me introduce what we'll be hearing about today. The office is the Multnomah County Sheriff who is in charge of the county's five jails, patrol for unincorporated areas of the county, and special services such as the River Patrol. The sheriff is responsible for an organization of more than 700 employees and with an annual budget exceeding $50 million. Recently, key issues for the office have included limits on jail space and an early release program in response to the lack of space, and change in the size and scope of the sheriff's department as large areas of unincorporated uh, Multnomah County have been annexed to the cities of Portland and Gresham. Those communities have assumed, in large part, law enforcement for the annexed territory. As to the candidates, I'll introduce them in order of their opening statements. John Hansen, who is sitting, Mark Hansen, thank you very much. Mark Hansen is, <laughs> is a sergeant with the Clackamas County Sheriff's Department, where he has worked for the past four years. He is a resident of Portland. Sergeant Hansen previously served with the Federal Bureau of Prisons and the Aurora Police Department and was an unpaid reserve for a part of the time with Portland Police Bureau. He studied criminal justice at the Portland Community College. That's Mark Hansen. John Bunnell has acted as Multnomah County Sheriff for the past three years after the retirement of former Sheriff Bob Skipper. Have I got this big step? Three years is good. Huh? All right, three years. <laughs> Strike two, one more and I'm out of here. He has more than 25 years experience with the Multnomah County Sheriff's Department, including commander of the Multnomah Multi-Agency Drug Task Force and of the Inspections Unit, and more recently as Chief Deputy for Administration and Corrections. He's a graduate of Oregon State University and of the FBI National Academy. Dan Noley is a veteran of 29 years service with the Portland Police Bureau, where he now acts as Assistant Chief for the Services Branch, responsible for fiscal, personnel, training, and internal investigations. Prior to this responsibility, he was in charge of the Bureau's East Precinct and commanded the Bureau's Detective Division. He hold a, holds a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in public administration from Portland State University. Vera Poole has served with the Multnomah County Sheriff's Department for 24 years, currently as a shift commander. She has 15 years of command management experience, including director of the department's restitution center. She holds a bachelor's degree and two master's degrees, one in education and another in psychology from the University of Portland. I'll now ask each of the candidates to approach their podiums and we'll begin with the opening statements.
first opening statement will be made by Mark Hansen. Good afternoon. I want to welcome everybody here, especially all the smiling, friendly faces I see of friends and associates out there. I am Mark Hansen. The reason I'm running for Multnomah County Sheriff is I believe it's time for change in the way the Multnomah County Sheriff operates. I have over 14 years of law enforcement and corrections experience. I'm the only candidate who has experience in both areas. Some people say, well, why is this important? Well, with an ever-changing department, as the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is, in, the, in its change of emphasis from law enforcement to its primary objective of corrections, it's, it's important that the person coming into this position has a working knowledge of that. I have worked for the Federal Bureau of Prisons. I opened the facility out in Sheridan, Oregon. I also work for the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office, where we operate jointly with the Oregon Department of Corrections, the State Intake Center, the only jointly operated facility between a county and a state agency. There are many changes that need to happen within the Sheriff's Office. Some changes have happened, but unfortunately, we've seen a large period of time of stagnant, unmoving, unchanging time. Uh, from an administration that has been resistant to change. You have a big responsibility ahead of you coming up, and that's electing the next sheriff. You're going to hear a lot of things up here today, a lot of political talk, unfortunately. Uh, some of it pertinent, others of it not. What I challenge you to do when you walk out of here today is to not just take the candidate's words for what's being said up here, but investigate yourself. Because I know that when you investigate, you will find that some of the things that were said up here are a little bit different than what was really going on. So I challenge you and thank you for being here. Next from John Bunnell. Good afternoon, I am John Bunnell. And the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office today is at a crossroads. I'm running for sheriff because I believe very deeply that making changes today will enable the Sheriff's Office to become an even more effective partner in our region's law enforcement community. With 26 years of experience at the Sheriff's Office and every area that the Sheriff's Office is responsible for, I ask for your support because I believe that I am the candidate best equipped to handle these changes. We have to adapt to the new realities of local law enforcement. The Sheriff's Office has to accept that its role is primarily in corrections. But we do have an important rural law enforcement responsibility. And that has been a very difficult, for tra uh, difficult for transition for many people in the Sheriff's Office to make. But I believe that we must embrace that change and move forward. In the three months, not three years, three months that I have served as Sheriff, I've already started the process of change. I have reduced management overhead to a point that we have the leanest management to staff ratio of any local government agency. I have firmly committed the agency to participating in Chair Beverly Stein's government reinvention program. I have continued to implement what is now considered a model program to combat sexual harassment and have made crystal clear to all within the agency that discrimination will not be tolerated. I am co-chairing with Chair Stein a broad-based task force to define our community's future corrections need and move forward with a solution. And I have worked hard, and I think I've worked very successfully to vastly improve our relationships with local law enforcement in the area, especially the Portland Police Bureau. One thing I need not change, however, is the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office commitment to excellence. I look forward to our discussion today, and thank you once again for being here. Thank you. Dan Noley. This campaign is about leadership, this campaign is about public trust. This campaign is about what sheriff can deliver public safety for the least amount of tax dollars. I have a different version of the past three months. The acting sheriff on five separate occasions has been the subject of independent investigative reports bringing discredit upon the sheriff's office. Most damaging was done, one done by the Oregonian which indicated that there was no investigation at all. Most damaging, the acting sheriff dismissed these allegations as lies, lies, and more lies. Worse, 
He refused to do an open investigation and allow others to investigate. This is an organization desperately in need of change, an organization that needs leadership at its time of change. I am the most experienced leader with a proven track record for leadership to lead a 700-person organization with a budget of $56 million. Public trust with our tax dollars is important, and the sheriff holds a key to public safety in this community, and that key is the key to the jail. Last year, 2,700 people, dangerous criminals, were released back into our community by the sheriff before their sentences were complete. I am the only candidate that has dedicated himself to delivering to the taxpayer the most cost-effective jail system possible. It must be legal. Obviously, it must be safe for the corrections officers who work in that facility. But it is also desperately time for a change. It is time for a new sheriff. Thank you. Vera Poole. As we move toward the 21st century, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is at a critical crossroad with regard to correction and law enforcement. More than 85% of Multnomah County residents live in incorporated areas and receive law enforcement services from Portland, Gresham, or Troutdale Police. Since 1970, our jail capacity has grown over 200% but it has not kept pace with the 40,000 offenders we booked in to the County Jail in 1994. As our population increases, so will the demand on our jail system. While the need for law enforcement services by the county will remain constant, those needs will continue to be met in cooperation with Gresham and Troutdale Police. Clearly, the focus of Multnomah County Sheriff's Office must change from law enforcement to correction. Last week, I released a broad overview of my plan to move in that direction. The three key points of this plan are adequate jail space, making criminals pay for their crime, breaking the cycle of crime. And upon the completion of this plan, correctional services will be our top priority, followed by administrative services, and law enforcement services. This plan will eliminate duplication of services between Multnomah County Sheriff's Office and other law enforcement agency, freeing up funds to be redirected and to strengthen our correction system. My plan will make our neighborhood safer while making the best use of taxpayer dollars. Portion of my plan were already adopted last year by Multnomah County and the City of Portland but more changes are needed. While my opponents claim to want to change, I am the only candidate who has a concrete plan to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will have uh, questions from our City Club panel, Greg Jackson and Paula Copel. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to the question that's asked. We'll begin with the first question of uh, Mark Hansen from Paula Copel. Mr. Hansen, a court order has capped the number of inmates at the detention center and at the courthouse jail. While there is no court order limiting the number of inmates allowed at other county facilities, the Sheriff's Office has on its own set limits for these facilities. Why shouldn't the Sheriff's Office take in as many inmates as possible? By setting the ca population caps at the same, uh, working under the same criteria that it does what the uh, facilities under court order is unrealistic, it's unworkable, and it's unsafe for the community. We need to look at ways of changing, changing that. We can add more beds. We should be adding more beds. There is ways of adding, there are ways of adding more beds. Uh, there is room in these facilities to do it. Uh, an unrealistic cap has been set. The other part of that is, is that the um, court order that we're current, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is currently working under needs to be revised. It needs to be changed. We need an administration who will go in and show the deficiencies that it has and how it does not pertain any longer to the current system. It has worked in other cities and other states that have challenged those caps. We can do it here. We need to look at ways of creating more beds and challenging these unrealistic caps. Thank you. 
The next question to Mr. Bunnell from Greg Jackson. Mr. Bunnell, a recent report by the Special Corrections Grand Jury found that the Multnomah County Sheriff's release policy has labeled Multnomah County as having the most liberal release system in the nation. Do you agree with that assessment? And please explain. No, I don't. I think we find ourselves in a very unique position. Already this year, we have booked 20% more people into our detention facility than we had at last year at this point in time. In January, for example, we booked 4,000 people into our facility. We do not have the beds to hold that many people. It's pure and simple. And if you look at the design capacities and the population cap that's been placed on us behind the, the federal court, I think we're doing an excellent job with our matrix release program. It's the best we can do under trying times, and I support the program as it exists now. Next question for Mr. Noli. Mr. Noli, total juvenile arrests in Multnomah County have grown from about 5,000 in 1990 to about 8,000 last year. Yet the juvenile detention home now under construction won't add more beds for juveniles, and two-thirds of the $36 million cost is for administration offices rather than detention space. Shouldn't the money have been spent on increasing detention capacity for serious juvenile offenders? Yes, I agree it should have been. And I agree that the, uh, I think the public to a certain degree uh, lost out when that facility was built. The other problem that you didn't mention that will also increase the dynamic of, of the issue with the juvenile court system is the change that brought about by Measure 11. Measure 11 will also increase the number of juveniles that will be held for longer periods of time for serious violent and other types of offenses. So in effect, we are going to be faced with a serious juvenile issue that we need to resolve. My solution would be to reach out on a tri-county basis to try on a regional basis to resolve the situation that we have in regards to holding sentenced offenders. Next question from Ms. Poole. Ms. Poole, how much law enforcement duplication occurs between Multnomah County and the Portland Police Bureau, and what would you do about these areas of overlap? My plan identify the duplication of services that is provided by Portland and Multnomah County Sheriff's Office in terms of patrolling uh, in West Portland. Quite often, uh, Multnomah County Sheriff only has two cars, so sometimes they are not available to respond to the calls in the west side of Portland, Sophus Island, Dornthorpe. Therefore, Portland response to those calls. Also, I do believe the duplication of services is in drug, the, the drug vice unit. Uh, we have a regional drug unit which handles not only on a local, state, and county, but federal in combination. And I do not believe that it is necessary for Multnomah County Sheriff's Office to continue to operate a drug unit. Second question for Mr. Hansen. Mr. Hansen, what's your plan to reduce jail overcrowding at all of the county's facilities? There's, there's numerous ways of reducing overcrowding. Um, the only reason there is overcrowding at this point is one is that the sheriff's office uh, and has not kept up with the population growth in Multnomah County. We need to have an administration who is progressive, who has vision, and who plans for 10, 15, 20 years down the road. We have to quit building for what's happening today. We have to build what we anticipate in the future. It's cheaper to build with today's dollars than it is to try to build with 10 years from now's dollars. We need to look at ways of consolidating our facilities into one or two main facilities and stop the duplication of services within itself. By saving this money, we can utilize that money for increasing the number of beds for construction, et cetera. There are many ways of reducing the overcrowding. The main way is, is to increase the number of beds. Thank you. Next question for Mr. Bunnell. Mr. Bunnell, with the increased threat of disease transmission, such as AIDS and tuberculosis, what is your assessment of the workplace safety of the county jail system? And additionally, what measures would you take to improve it? Well, this is an area that causes us deep concern, not only for staff, but for inmate safety and the public ge uh, in general. And we have the finest health services staff of any correctional facility 
in the United States of America. In fact, our director of health services, Kathy Page, uh, at their national convention was just recognized for that achievement. We, uh, in our five jails that we have, we do put population out there that reflects health problems. We keep people isolated that have been identified uh, as being at risk individuals, both for staff and other inmates. And through our efforts in classification, we have minimized this problem within our five facilities. Next question for Mr. Noli. Mr. Noli, as you look into the future, do you see the primary role of the Sheriff's Office as corrections or enforcement, and why? It's absolutely going to become corrections. In effect, as the county grows and continues to grow, the Sheriff's responsibility in law enforcement, while important to those people who receive it, has gone away. And there are only about 30,000 people left in the county who are really the responsibility of the Sheriff's Office to provide patrol, and that's primarily the rural area of East Multnomah County. In the corrections field, I think it's going to be important for the Sheriff to take a leadership role and attempt to work with the other partners of the other counties around us in order to be able to satisfactorily resolve the complicated issues that are facing the Sheriff's Office in regards to jail facilities and also to reach out and create those partnerships to help reduce the impact on the taxpayer of Multnomah County. Next question from Ms. Poole. Ms. Poole, does it really make sense to choose our top law enforcement officials at the ballot box instead of a rigorous hiring process which focuses on education and accomplishments rather than image and speaking ability? Good question. I believe that it is best to elect that chief director, that chief law enforcer of a county uh, sheriff's office because you are serving at the pleasure of the citizen of Multnomah County and you have somewhat of stability in that position rather than being appointed because you are serving at the pleasure of the appointed authority. Therefore, I do believe that the citizen should have that choice and that voice and who they want to lead and, and who they want to be the answering body as a sheriff of Multnomah County. The third and last question from the panel for Mr. Hansen. Mr. Hansen, despite the, re the results of recent ballot measures, do you think it's efficient to treat the problem of crime by building more jails, or can you propose better alternatives? The correction system is more than just one system. It's more than just putting people into jail. We all know that. We all see it. The program that I've talked about uh, in this campaign of implementing, and I intend on it when elected, is a program where instead of inmates just laying around in bed eating three meals a day, we start utilizing that time that we have their attention and start having more programs in the facilities to deal with drug, alcohol uh, problems, uh, problems of aggression. Uh, these different things that cause them to people to act out and to commit these crimes. We need to start helping the person while we have their attention in the facilities to want to start wanting to change their attitudes. We can have all the programs outside of the facility, all the work release programs and everything, but until the day that we help that person want to change and make it them think that they're the ones that are doing it and they're doing it because they want to, they're not going to change. Thank you. Next question for Mr. Bernal. Mr. Bernal, it's your lucky day. You just won the lottery. You have $100 million to spend on increasing public safety in Multnomah County. How would you allocate it and why? Well, we are working right now with a public safety facility task force. And people have come to me and said, well, we need 1,000 or 2,000 more beds to handle our, our correctional needs. I disagree with that. I think what we need is a multidimensional triage center that will identify offenders when they come in and get them directed towards a proper program. But we also need to maintain hard beds, hard jail space for those offenders who are entirely too dangerous to walk our streets. Another thing I would like to do, and I have some very serious questions about our rehabilitative efforts uh, in this nation, I would certainly donate 
a large portion of that money to preventative programs, programs that enter the front door rather than leaving a bunch of that money at the back door. And for Mr. Noli. Mr. Noli, what plans, if any, do you have to address the dramatic increase in reported cases of domestic violence and requests for domestic violence restraining orders? I was hoping I was going to win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the domestic violence, I served on a domestic violence task force when it first started in Multnomah County several years ago with Sarah Hardin and Judge Harrell and some other people. It's a, it's a terrible problem. It needs to be worked through in a number of ways, and the Sheriff's Office has some extremely vital pieces of that. One of them is the Civil Process Unit, which is the one that serves domestic violence restraining orders and those kind of orders. There are some other places in there where the Sheriff also has the ability to establish some space in the jail for those people who offend in those, because what happens oftentimes is in the high state of emotion, the perpetrator of the violence returns and commits the violence before the, the officer in the street can deal with it. But bottom line, it, it's going to take a lot of education. It's going to take a lot of work with the whole continuum of that process in order to bring about change in the way people think about and deal with domestic violence. Last question from the panel for Ms. Poole. Ms. Poole, uh, Portland Police Chief Charles Moose has been praised for his efforts to serve as a positive role model for inner city youth. Do you have any similar plans? And if so, what are they? Uh, yes, I do have similar plan. The plan I alluded to in my presentation, I want to uh, free up approximately $2 million. Portion of those $2 million will go toward preventive and intervention for our youth as early as six years old and get those individuals involved in positive role models, using uh, professional folks in the community to be their mentor and inviting those individuals and going to school, trying to redirect those uh, students' attention toward professional career rather than becoming a career criminal. And so that's part of the plan that I have already discussed and the plan I like to implement as Sheriff of Multnomah County. Now is the opportunity for the candidates to ask questions of each other. Each candidate will ask one question of each of the other candidates. The question must be asked in 30 seconds. The candidate to whom the question is directed must be answered in one minute, after which the questioner has the option of a 30-second rebuttal. All set on that? <laughs> OK, well, we'll begin then with Mr. Hansen. Mr. Bunnell, on February 8th, you told Channel 12 News you were against a Citizens Review Board. On March 1st, you said you were looking into having a Citizens Review Board of some type. On January 23rd, you said you were somewhat resistant to change. On March 2nd, you said, I don't understand why people think I'm resistant to change. How are citizens to trust you and your word when you keep changing what you say? Well, you, you've given me about eight different questions, Mark. You're supposed to give me one. Um, with regards to the Civilian Review Board, the Sheriff's Office has always maintained a very open door policy with its citizens. And for the years, maybe we've relied on that too much. And I will state unequivocally with all the news media and for you and for the audience that I have no opposition to a Civilian Review Board. Uh, I have talked in great detail about that particular subject with the Chief of Police of Portland and other folks. In fact, uh, on April 1st, I will be meeting with a group of people at our Chief's meeting to discuss how we could implement a Citi Citizens Review Board within the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. Any rebuttal? No. All right, your second question, Mr. Hanson. Ms. Poole, you uh, have a plan which you've given out showing the changes that you plan to make and elected. Your plan includes the termination of the drug enforcement team. And you say this is a duplication of services. Your plan has no provision of who is going to take over this responsibility or if there is anyone uh, who is currently handling that in the unincorporated areas of Multnomah County. Can you explain how this will serve the citizens of Multnomah County in providing for a safe community? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hanson, I believe I already addressed that pro uh, question, but I would like to reiterate it. Uh, I do believe there's a duplication of services, and also we already have an existing drug unit rocking 
which covers all the agencies. And we have Portland Police uh, Agency. We also have Troutdale. I do believe that my plan in terms of forming partnerships with other law enforcement agencies and working collectively rather than having a turf and not working uh, in a cohesive manner. That's my plan, and those are the issues that I have been addressing. It is a duplication of services when we are not able to work together as a unit in the enforcement field. Any rebuttal on that? Yes. My point is it's only a duplication of services when there are actually two agencies working in the exact same area. And if anyone can, wants to check the record, you will easily find that there is not a duplication of services when it comes to drug task force in unincorporated areas and areas like Gresham. Your third question, Mr. Hanson. <coughs> Mr. Noley, you've been saying for the last two months how your management experience is going to make positive changes in the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. Portland Police Bureau Central Precinct is almost $200,000 over its overtime budget this year. During the busiest times of the day, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., there are only two police officers in southwest Portland to take calls. This means that there isn't enough police officers to do community policing. How does this show your ability at good management or your ability to change the same poor management within the sheriff's office? Mark, the uh, problem here is that you're sadly mistaken. In regards to southwest Portland, southwest Portland starts from Burnside, goes through part of downtown, through all of southwest Portland, and it has probably about eight cars that work there on a regular basis. Secondly, in regards to overtime, yes, the Portland Police Bureau is overspent on overtime. It is an issue that has been dealt with a number of times in the past, and we will continue to deal with it in the future. Any rebuttal? Yes. These figures were provided to me just several days ago by the Portland Police Bureau, so I hate to disagree with Mr. Noley, but if he goes and checks his facts and he goes down to the Central Precinct today and takes a look at it, he will find that there are only two police officers in southwest Portland between 3 and 6. Mr. Bonnell, your first question. Okay. I'll, I'll start with uh, Lieutenant Poole, and I know you're very nervous. You think I'm going to ask you how old you are, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. The sheriff is responsible for the building and administration of a $58 million a year budget. Also, the development of specific policies and the supervision of law enforcement functions. Can you describe your management experience in these areas? I have John, Acting Sheriff Bunnell. I have 15 years of management experience. I have managed or been a shift commander of four of Multnomah County five correctional facility. I have the leadership ability. I have the skills. I have the academic achievement. And I have a track record. I have managed over 100,000 inmates in my 24 years with Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. Certainly, if I have the ability and skill to run your $57 million operation, I can have people in position to manage 702 employees who work for Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. Any rebuttal? Well, my rebuttal is that I'm very proud of the command staff I have within the Sheriff's Office, and this is a perfect example of that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Your second question, Mr. Bunnell. Dan, you've talked about uh, ending the matrix system as a, if it is a switch that can be turned on and off. In fact, it will be tremendously expensive to do that. Can you tell the audience how much it will cost and where you intend on finding the money to do it? John, absolutely. I intend to find the cost in the administrative overhead, in the uh, mismanagement of the overtime funds that was pointed out by the county auditor in which $300,000 was misspent. I intend to uh, bring it about because you're talking about 2,700 people. That's about 10 to 12 a day. And I think it would be relatively easy by increasing the capacity of Inverness and putting extra corrections officers in Inverness to be able to handle that level of 10 to 12 prisoners a day and prevent the uh, matrixing system. Any rebuttal? Yes, I do have a rebuttal. Uh, what Dan is talking about is the county auditor examined our budget of $58 million, and he found $300,000 that he felt could be saved. It was about the only negative in that examination. To end the matrixing policy that we have right here in the Sheriff's Office today, 
would cost us 15 to 17 million dollars a year because I would need over 500 beds immediately to stop that particular follow-up policy. And your last question, Mr. Brown? Uh, Mark, you have repeatedly stated that our five jails represent a duplication of service and should be replaced by one mega jail. What specifically are those duplications of service and how would you finance, site, and operate this mega jail? Well, those duplication of services, it, it's, it's like any big, or let's say we have several small hotels. We constantly, it would be more advantageous at times to have one hotel where you have only certain numbers of employees. Operating five correctional facilities, you have duplication of services when it comes to uh, food service, when it comes to the people that have to um, monitor the people going in and out of facilities, duplication of services, when um, command staff, the list goes on and on. I'm surprised, well, I guess I'm not surprised that John doesn't see this because I come from an extensive background in corrections, both in the federal system and with the state and county level. I see these problems. I know what it is to operate a large facility and how cost effective it can be in comparison to running several facilities spread out. The numbers of inmates in comparison to the numbers of facilities, the dollars just don't work out to having that many facilities. Far more cost effective to run just a couple facilities. Thank you. Any rebuttal? Well, the fact is that we do have five jails, and each is geared for a specific clientele, and it works very well with our system. The problem is that we don't have enough beds to handle our clientele. Mr. Noli, your first question. Vera. One of your responsibilities will, if elected, be to deal with the allegations of sexual contact with the drug enforcement, drug use in the narcotics unit, misuse of county funds, sexual harassment, and racial harassment. How would you handle those situations? Mr. Noli, I do believe that an effective leader, a, a leader who is accountable, a leader who is responsible will not allow those kinds of complaints to escalate in its department. And as sheriff of Multnomah County, I definitely will not only not tolerate it, but I will not have employees working for me who exemplify that type of behavior. Rebuttal? None. Your second question? Mr. Hansen, the same question. How would you deal with it? Well, it is a complicated issue. Unfortunately, it's a, it's, a, it's a bad problem. If it wasn't a bad problem within the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, we wouldn't see it as part of the politics of this race. We would be able to start concentrating on other things that we should be, on the crime rate, on the jail beds, but unfortunately, at times, we're being distracted. It's because these things that have been allegated in the past have not been dealt with and have been not been investigated to an end. If they would have been investigated to an end, we wouldn't be hearing about them, but we are. It's important that the, in the integrity of the department start at the top. And by that, we have to set the standard of what we will and will not accept. And we will not accept sexual discrimination, um, any kind of those types of things by our deputies or anyone and any kind of accusation I will guarantee you under my administration will be investigated and will come to an end in a conclusion thank you any rebuttal no your third question then mr. Newley. John you've had 100 days to call for an outside investigation of the Oregonians allegations you've also had 100 days to form a citizens review panel why have you not done so? With regards to the Oregonians' allegations, those allegations were investigated by the Portland Police Bureau, the District Attorney's Office, and the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. They were also, in a way, investigated by the Oregonian, who had three reporters assigned to the story, and I think you all read the story in the February 5th newspaper. Those allegations are untrue, and as much as you like to hear it, Dan, they're lies, lies, and more lies. I will stand by the results of those three agencies' investigations. With regard to the Civilian Review Board, this is a new phenomenon for the Sheriff's Office. I have admitted that. It only came to light. It was only mentioned for the first time after that February 5th article in the Oregonian. 
And I have told you consistently that we are looking in and we are examining the possibility of incorporating a civilian review board into the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. Rebuttal. John, the unpleasant part about this race has been that you are the only person with the ability to do that. And as acting sheriff, you have not acted. Uh, Ms. Poole, your first question. Mr. Noli, under Police Chief Potter, you opposed community policing, one of the smartest innovation of the Portland Police Department. You also proposed to illegally run jails or build more jails without saying where the money will come from. Dan, what is your specific plan to pay for your illegal jails or your new jail buildup? <laughs> Two questions, Vera, but I'll answer them both. The first question has to do with community policing, and I've been a strong proponent of community policing since the first day. Yes, there were disagreements in the Portland Police Bureau about how community policing would take place, and I think it's important that people disagree. It's important in a race like this that we disagree and that we bring those different ideas together and that we argue about them, and I certainly had arguments with people about how to do community policing, but the idea of doing community policing was actually reached under Chief Walker it was actually reached by Roberta Weber, Rob Akeley, myself, and Chief Walker, and we actually agreed as the leadership and command of the Bureau at the time to move that issue forward. The second issue that I will address is, quite honestly, it is not illegal to increase the capacity of the jail system. There is two jails who have the court order, and I think that court order can be challenged. The crime bill passed last year gave us the ability, and Philadelphia has already challenged their crime bill. I guess my question back is, why haven't we? Rebuttal? No. Your second question, then, Ms. Brewer. Acting Sheriff John Bunnell, on November the 30th, 1994, one of the first things you did as acting sheriff was to promote 10 white males and temporarily one female. Even when there was a broad list of diverse qualified candidates to choose from, many with more experience than some of the 10. Now on the campaign trail, you say you have zero tolerance for discrimination. Given what you say today, would you make the same decision to promote 10 white men and why? Was that bell for us? No, that was uh, the oh, okay. time on the question. <laughs> okay. Though. You're free to go uh, ahead. Vera, you understand that we have three different classifications of personnel within the Sheriff's Office with three different entrance qualifications. I promoted people on November 30th to law enforcement functions. I did not have 10 corrections people who are dual certified in law enforcement functions. Therefore, I could not promote them. I promoted them off law enforcement promotional lists, not corrections officers lists. And Vera took a, a promotional exam for captain in a uh, on a corrections list, which we do have valid. I only had one spot available, and I promoted uh, Jeannie King to that spot. And uh, the other promotions were all acting promotions also, as was Jeannie King's. Rebuttal? Uh, yes, uh, during the campaign trail, John has mentioned he wants to bring unity uh, with correction and law enforcement. And I believe you had the opportunity to begin the unity among those uh, divisions. Your third question, Ms. Poole. Mr. Hansen, why don't you wear your uniform when you campaign in, in your bus benches ad and in your campaign material like John Bunnell? Well, I think it's a distractor from, from the true race. It's to give, I believe it's to give an air of something that isn't. It's to convince, it would be to convince you that I was something maybe that I wasn't. The important thing is here is that you have four candidates running. We should all be on an equal level, and I wish we could all dress the same. Though Vera, I don't think she would look good in a suit, and I don't think I'd look good in a dress. But the bottom line is I think it was totally unprofessional in a race like this to dress in a uniform and to represent my department as such or what my rank or anything else and that's why I didn't even bring up the issue with my sheriff nor when my sheriff for Clackamas County ran he never appeared in a uniform either. Any rebuttal on that? No thank you. Okay we're now to the closing statements of each of the candidates they will have two minutes 
uh, for those statements, and we'll go in reverse order, starting with Ms. Poole. Not in reverse order, but we'll start with Ms. Poole, at least. <laughs> I want to thank the City Club for giving us the opportunity to speak to you today and present our ideals for the future of the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. The differences between us are clear. I am the only candidate with the commitment to safer communities, the plan to create safer communities, and the experience to make the plan happen. My plan isn't something created for this campaign. I developed this clear uh, plan this blueprint for change one year ago before I entered the 1994 primary. Part of that plan have already been implemented with the transfer of 23 Multnomah County deputy, deputies to the Portland Bureau. Good ideals are often borrowed, and over the course of this campaign, my opponents have gradually been integrating my ideals into their platforms. They say that invitation is the highest form of flattery, but as you have uh, before you leave this afternoon, remember where those ideals came from. Remember, I am the candidate who wants to eliminate services already provided by the law enforcement agency while providing adequate jail space. I am the only candidate who wants to get the root causes of criminal behavior, drug, drug and alcohol abuse. And I am the only candidate who wants to make sure that when criminals leave our jail, they don't come back, cleaned up and shaped up and ready to become productive, law-abiding citizens. In Vera Pool, you will have a sheriff with a clear vision and a specific plan for smart correction and safer neighborhoods. I would be honored to serve you as sheriff of Multnomah County. Together, we can build safer neighborhoods in all of Multnomah County. Thank you very much. Please hold your applause and we'll give them all a, a round of when we complete here. The next closing statement is from Mr. Bennell. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office has a national reputation in providing progressive law enforcement and correctional excellence. In January and February 1995, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office was audited by the International Association of Chiefs of Police, and I quote, the Sheriff's Office management practices yield a positive picture. Sheriff Bunnell has approached the changeover in management staff as an opportunity to build a new and aggressive management team. Comments and suggestions by staff and Sheriff Bunnell reflect an experienced group with serious intent to run a professional department. Deputies were candid about shortcomings and enthusiastic about change." End quote. We have affected change within the Sheriff's Office. Change is a fundamental operating principle that has governed the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office ever since I've been there. I also offer leadership, leadership that has been recognized and endorsed by Don Clark, Fred Purse, Bob Skipper, most of the sheriffs of Oregon, the chiefs of police of Gresham, Milwaukee, Beaverton, and Troutdale, the mayors of the small cities of Multnomah County, political leaders, Sharon Kelly, John Lim, Governor John Kitzhopper. But more importantly, my leadership has been recognized by the men and the women who work for the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. I have been endorsed by the Deputy Sheriff's Association, the Corrections Officers Association, and the Multnomah County Command Officers Association. All of these people have endorsed my candidacy because they know I have the best record and the most experience of any candidate running for sheriff. I'm proud to work with the men and women of the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. I share their dedication to public safety and community service, and I will be honored to lead the Sheriff's Office into the 21st century, and I do ask for your support to do so. Mark Hansen, your closing statement. Well, I want to thank everyone for being here. You do have a tough job ahead of you, kind of getting through all of this and trying to figure out who really is the best one to serve each and every one of you. I am the only candidate who has talked about stopping inmates from just laying around in the facilities, eating three meals a day, sleeping just to get up the next morning. And the only candidate who has talked about starting programs within the jail, eliminating TV altogether, except for those types of programs to help change attitudes, help deal with drug and alcohol problems. I'm the only one who's talked about consolidating facilities. It may seem like a foreign thing to the people from the inside looking out, but coming from the experience I have of opening state-of-the-art facilities and know what it takes to run them and know how efficiently you can run a facility when it is consolidated and you have all the resources right there, you don't have to transport inmates constantly, the money savings is incredible. 
That's why I'm convinced it's going to take somebody from outside of the current political structure that has allowed us to get into the mess we're in right now. My endorsements. I'm endorsed by people who have absolutely nothing to gain by me being elected. The people I work with endorsed me. The people I used to work with endorsed me. The people who are standing behind me endorsing me and helping my com campaign are people who don't work for the sheriff's office, aren't connected in any way, and have nothing to gain. Nor do, are they paying back any favors to me by endorsing me. I think it's important to look at why people endorse people and see if they have something to gain by it. I caution you on that because it is very important to, to look at. The bottom line is we need somebody in there with the experience who can walk in tomorrow and do the job, who has experience in law enforcement and corrections. This is no time to elect somebody who has to start learning how to run something. And that's why I'm asking you to vote for Mark Hansen for sheriff. Thank you. And Dan Nolley? Leadership and public trust. That's what we've talked about in this campaign. Somebody with a great amount of integrity in the Multnomah County criminal justice system is Mike Schrunk, and he's endorsed my candidacy since the very first day. But more importantly, as an assistant chief in the Portland Police Bureau, I've had the opportunity, the chance to work in the greatest organization, a large organization, and you've watched that organization make a dynamic change in the past several years as we've become one of the premier agencies in community policing. I believe that I can bring that to the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, and I believe the organization there needs change. Citizen complaints of misconduct should be fully investigated and then open for public review. We need to end the costly turf wars that have occurred in the past, the duplication of effort, and work cooperatively together with the courts, with the DAs, and with the other criminal justice agencies in order to solve problems and make our community safe. We need to petition the federal court to remove the cap, and the crime bill gives us that opportunity. We should work then with the finest minds in corrections to determine how to use every square foot of jail space effectively. We also need to work throughout the entire system, the entire criminal justice system, from the most dangerous criminal habitual offender to the youngest juvenile offender to figure out how to solve those problems and work better, work smarter together. Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is in need of a change. It's in need of a new sheriff. The ballots come to you on March 14th. They will come to you in the mail. I need your vote. I need your support. Please vote Dan Noli for sheriff. On behalf of the club membership, I want to thank each of you for being here with us today. And I know we wish you all well in the coming engagement. Thank you very much for being an excellent uh, program for us. Appreciate it.